講噶啦。放心啦，我份出世命咧就係好相遇噶啦。Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Francis Bacon, and this is my review of Hardcore Comedy. I was actually interested in this film. Three short stories rolled into one 90-minute film. And I was interested because it was Category 3. Probably still is. So I guess there's not going to be any Mandarin dub. In the first segment, Shocking Wet Dreams, two computer geeks who can't get a dorm room end up finding accommodation in a building that hosts a lot of one-woman brothels, i.e. prostitutes. One of their neighbors is a woman named Bowie who's very kind-hearted. She's not one of those girls who works downstairs. She's a kept woman. That makes her better, somehow. Her neighbors are much more fun to watch than your neighbors are. Bowie is played well by Michelle Y, who looks especially nice, surrounded by women whose wardrobe comes from Vive la Soyon. She has a boyfriend, and he's not always very nice. He's a corrupt cop, and he's also the chief of the Slapaho tribe. Cue a clumsy lurch toward romance, and hookers playing drums with dildos. There were actually several things that I enjoyed about this segment, one of the best being the skinny guy from 33D Invader playing a prostitute. That's the greatest anti-prostitution PSA ever. Ugh. The second segment is called Run on Drugs, which is not something I recommend. It tells the story of a young man, played by William Chan, who spends a night selling hallucinogenic mushrooms. He meets a young woman, played by Dada Chan. I hope the purse matches the hat. I really love the way that movies seem to circumvent reality. By doing away with the waiting period, between the time that you take drugs and the time they affect you. Not all drugs induce immediate responses, from what I've read, but so what? Verisimilitude is cinematic tedium, and this movie already has plenty of that. I'd like to pose a philosophical question. What if they made a movie about people you just can't seem to give a shit about? If you expect me to care about your characters, or get drawn into their story, don't make them irredeemable fuckwits. Now I suppose in Hong Kong's rather Puritan society, it's somehow transgressive to make a love story about two people who meet because of drug dealing. But such relationships are essentially doomed right from the start, from what I've read. The third, and thankfully final, segment is called Can't Stop the Killing, wherein a womanizing sushi chef needs to pay off a gambling debt by fulfilling a contract on a gangster. He looks up his old girlfriend whom he had mistreated rather callously before she went away to Canada. Hey, Hong Kong girls love compulsive gambling, womanizing hitmen who mistreat them. Personally, I think he'd have been better off with the dope gobbling bimbo from the previous segment, but pff, what do I know? But like I always say, why should logic interfere with narrative? Maybe because we're expected, at some point, to buy into this romance and therefore treat these characters at least partially seriously. Which would have been a lot easier if they weren't such overblown caricatures. Don't make the bad guy a rainbow-haired, flaming metrosexual with a voice like a woman unless you're trying to make a joke out of it. If that is what you were doing, please remember that jokes, by definition, are supposed to be funny. If you tell us something that happened in a line of dialogue, please don't give us a protracted and seemingly interminable flashback that's intended to get us to wonder about what's going to happen because you already told us the outcome of the incident. I didn't take any drugs. Speaking of which, no dance scenes. I suppose in a movie that's about dancing, I can sit through it, but in general, don't surprise me with a dance scene, because you know what I'm going to surprise you with? <laughs> My biggest problem with this movie and several movies like it is that I get the impression that the filmmakers are very pleased with themselves. This movie is fun, disposable entertainment, the emphasis really being on disposable. I'm glad it's here, since it can't play in China, but I'm probably not going to buy it on DVD. However, if you want to do that, please go ahead. I have no problems if you do that. The only thing I would have a problem with is if you download the movie. When this film is released to DVD, which happens pretty quickly these days, I will update the description so you can buy the movie. If you enjoy this review, please leave me a comment. If you didn't enjoy it, leave me a comment. If you enjoy these reviews in general, I would greatly appreciate a subscription.